Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well, and I hope you've had a fabulous week and are ready for the weekend. Today's video is all about the Hermes leathers, which ones I recommend, which ones I don't recommend, and how I've found using each of the leathers. Now, I don't have all of them, okay? <laughs> As much as I would like all of them, I don't have all of them. Um, but I'll still go through the pros and cons to each of those leathers. Let's dive straight into the video. But before we dive straight into the video, if you could hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed so you never ever miss a video, I post up every Saturday. And by the way, guys, I've hit 3,000. <laughs> You have no idea how happy I am. I remember talking about hitting 100 subscribers and then 700 and now we're on 3,000 which is like <laughs> I'm so so happy and I appreciate your guys support. I've I speak to amazing people and I've formed amazing relationships with people from all around the world and I think it's just it's look I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> It means the world to me. I, I appreciate it so, so much. So yes, let's keep growing. Appreciate all your guys' support. And let's get into the video before I start getting more goosebumps. <laughs> The first leather we are looking at is Togo leather. Now this is definitely one of the most popular leathers. I mean, you've got Epson, you've got Clermont's, and you have Togo leather. And these three leathers I would say are three of the most popular leathers, especially when you're being offered a bag, like let's say you walk into an Hermes store and you're a first time buyer of one of these bags, then those are the three leathers you're more than likely going to be offered a bag in. So I'm going to start with these three leathers first and then I'll talk about others as we get on into the video. Now when you look at the grain of Togo, it is a very, it's pronounced, okay? It's not flat, it's quite pronounced, but it is smooth to the touch. Some of the bags actually come with veining. That is not a defect, that is just the way and the piece that they used to make that bag. I don't actually have any veining on mine, um, so mine was just a clear vein free piece um, but if you look I just want to give you a closer look at the leather the pebbled look this is sometimes a look that not everyone loves so if you're not a fan of that obviously pebbled look then this isn't a leather to go for but if you don't mind that pebbled look then it's it's honestly it's one of the best leathers i think durability wise it's very light it rains a lot in england right sometimes you don't have your raincoat and if you don't have your raincoat you are practically screwed <laughs> you don't have to you have to worry but you don't have to worry too too much like i kind of put a scarf over and i'm not having palpitations while carrying my bag as opposed to clements which i'll get into in a minute definitely a, a leather that i highly recommend because of the durability aspect of it. A really good pro about the Togo leather is the fact that when it comes to refurbishing your bag, if let's say you wanted to send it for a spa day, it is easy to do so and your bag will probably come back looking as good as new. Now, this is where it starts to get really, it, it depends on your preference. Some people like the slouchy look on a Birkin or a Kelly. I, on the other hand, I'm not a huge, I'm not at that stage in my life where I quite like that slouchy look. So I wouldn't recommend getting a Togo leather Birkin or Kelly in a really big size. The biggest that I would go in a Birkin is in a size 30 because that still manages to hold its shape depending on how you use it. Again, if you use inserts and stuff like that, that will make a difference to the bag. One thing that I must say about Togo leather, I personally feel like Togo leather actually dulls the bright, beautiful colors that Hermes do. I like the vibrancy of the bright colors. And when you put a vibrant color on Togo leather, it just doesn't look the same as it does on Epson. So I'm not a huge fan of having Togo leathers in the bright colors. So like your yellows and your blues, and I'm not a fan of it. I prefer those colors to be on Epson. Whether the neutral colors, so the gold, noir, Cray, would I want cray? Cray? Cray will do, yeah, cray. Things like that that aren't very vibrant, then I don't mind having them on Togo leather. So that is definitely a personal preference and it's up to you whether you don't mind the dullness that Togo gives to a color, but it will never be as bright as, let me show you this one. 
It will never be as bright as that. I mean, just look at the vibrancy of this beautiful Epson Vert Vertical Birkin. It is absolutely stunning. The next leather, we are looking at Epson, guys. Again, durable. Oh my goodness. Absolutely love this leather. The reason why I love this leather a lot, and most recently a lot, a lot, because my theory was a little bit wrong, but right. I'll explain further in a minute. But this leather is embossed and as you can see it has a much smaller grain. It's just so stunning and it just absorbs colour so so beautifully. So I always recommend when looking at bright colours when it comes to Birkins try and get them in Epson because they will show that colour off so so beautifully in comparison to your Togo and your Clements leather. I can honestly say I've really enjoyed using them, especially this one. This one's my most used, as you can see she's um, very floppy <laughs> in comparison to this one who's only been used like probably a handful of times because she's just blue and I don't know, I haven't worn her much. I tried to wear her every summer but <laughs> I always go back to this one. A lot of times whenever you hear someone saying what leather is their favourite they say Epsom leather and the reason why it is very resilient to scratches okay very very resilient I mean when it does get a scratch then it can be a little bit bad because it kind of has a lighter colour underneath I can never explain it but you can see that just a few is from a scratch just that little it's lighter underneath so if that was a huge scratch you'll be able to see it so that is definitely something to be wary of when you do have an Epson bag because although it is hard to scratch if it does scratch it will show a lot more than it would on a Togo leather bag it is so easy to clean it's as easy as getting a cotton pad putting a little bit of water on it just dampening it a bit wipe it dry it you're done clean perfect perfection <laughs> Now, the difference between Togo and Epson is the structure. Because it's an embossed leather, it won't lose its shape. No matter how long I use it for, it's gonna stay like this, okay? And now, for some people, they might not like that look. And this is where I start to recommend Togo, because Togo will slouch things like the sides, the corners. So, I'll show you here on this one, because this one does it. Do you see how you get the corners sticking out of here? That won't happen with this. This is how your bag will look forever. Are you a structured person or are you someone that likes the beauty in the bag when it starts to slouch over the time? Another great thing about Epson is the fact that it is very lightweight. This is a size 30 and it is very, very light. I've never ever carried this bag and thought, oh my gosh, it's just is too much for me <laughs> unless I overfilled it but other than that no honestly it's a very very light leather you do not get the Birkin 25 in Epson leather unless it is Cellier and the Kellys in Cellier tend to be made of Epson leather whether you very very rarely would see a return shape Kelly made in Epson um, it's not a common occurrence I haven't really seen them in Epson and most of the time you do see it in Cellier. So that is the difference when it comes to the two bags and the leathers that they like to use on the bags. I do have a Kelly in Togo leather but she's special order. They don't make the Kelly Celliers in Togos anymore. I've got a feel for all of the leathers and I would say now that I've got my mini Kelly in the Epson I think Epson is definitely my favourite. The reason why I didn't like Epson before is because it is very, very stiff. When you first get Epson leather, it is super duper stiff. So I thought in the smaller bags, I'd have that same issue. I thought, oh, it's going to be so, so hard to get into. Whereas I got my Mini Kelly and I actually don't feel that way. It's very easy to get into, which I was surprised about. It is very stiff when you first start to use it. But then over time, it becomes easy and it's just, it's just like a normal bag. So now we are going to be looking looking at Clemence leather and she is my beautiful Kelly 32 in Grizz Pearl. Gree, Gree Pearl, sorry. Um. Now, when you look at the leather, I mean just for face value, if you had no idea about Togo and leathers and all this stuff, they would probably pretty much look the same with a slight sheen to the Clemence leather. However, the grain on this leather is more flat, where this is more protruded, protruded. 
this sticks out a little bit more whether this has a pebbled leather but it's flatter and it feels flatter to its surface now the difference between the Togo and the Clemence is definitely the weight the weight of this leather okay if you're gonna get this leather then make sure it's in the smaller bag because I promise you it is so heavy <laughs> Unfortunately, the water, Clemence, not a great match together, you know. <clears throat> wipe it down as soon as you get water on it. Don't let it sit on the bag. Wipe it straight away. Because the water can actually cause blistering on here. That is why I don't often take her out in the winter. She's more of my summer, spring kind of bag when it's not raining and there's no chances of rain. You have a beautiful, soft smooth grain with a slight sheen to it. Some people like the slouch, some people don't. I myself, not a big fan yet of the slouch, but I can appreciate it. I still think it looks beautiful. Mine hasn't slouched and the reason why mine hasn't slouched is all due to the fact of the way that I use my bags. I always put inserts in my bags. These are by 7RP. I rave about these all the time. They are the best, like the creme de la creme. They are what keep my bags in shape and keep them looking their best because if I didn't have these inserts, they probably wouldn't look the way that they do now. I know there's other bag organizers out there, but they're not made to the same standard that these are, which means indentations can be caused in the bag especially if it is in this kind of leather then do invest in one of these bag inserts i have a discount code to the inserts down below which oh look there's my lipstick silly sorry about that <laughs> they are a must so my recommendation when it comes to which leather to get and which specific leather to go for i have to either togo or Epson because those are the two leathers that you don't have to stress yourself out over and I know especially as a first time bag you will stress over it okay <laughs> you'll stress over every little thing so just to relieve some of the pressure that you'll get whilst carrying this bag I recommend either Togo or Epson the next two leathers which I'm I'm kind of gonna compare to each other that you see are Tadelect Tadelect <laughs> and Swift. Now these two leathers are very similar leathers in the sense that they're both very very soft. However, Swift has more a, like a really really fine grain and Tadelect has no grain at all. Now the problem with these two leathers is the fact that they are so 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 scratchable. <laughs> They are so, so soft and they are very, very delicate. They are not leathers that you want to get as an everyday bag or as a bag that you're going to take out often. They're, they're, they're an occasional kind of leather bag, which is a reason why it's kind of stopped me from putting down the Rosakura on my wish list because I, I want the Rosakura really badly, but I don't quite want it in swift because I know what will happen. I will hardly ever reach for that bag because of the delicate nature of the leather. So that is definitely something to think about. Okay guys, if you are going to use these bags often and less of an occasional bag, then do consider the fact that these bags are likely to get scratched very, very, very easily. The pluses, however, Swift absorbs color really, really well. Honestly, the colors and just such, I think that's why they only make Rosakura and Swift at the moment, Swift and Chevra, because those leathers show that true beauty of the color, whereas it would probably look a little bit different on the other leathers. I don't actually know the reason why they don't do it any of the other leathers, but I'm guessing it's to do with the way that the color shows on the other leathers, as opposed to the way that it shows on Swift and Chevra. So Swift is very, very beautiful in that regard. Cadillac, however, is more of a better leather when it comes to your neutrals. That has no visible grains on it. It is slightly heavier than Swift, but it is soft to the touch. It's very, very soft and smooth. It would be much better suited for your darker colors because it absorbs the color differently to Swift. So Tadelect is good for your dark colors. Swift is good for your bright colors. Tadelect is a heavier leather and Swift is a lighter leather, but they're both, both. <laughs> 
the worst when it comes to scratches. So just bear that in mind if you are considering getting a bag in Swift or you have no idea about leathers. Swift is a leather that you want to stay away from as a first time buyer. Now, when it comes to the structure of the leathers, Swift is a very, very soft leather and it will only get softer with time. So again, another thing to bear in mind if you do go for Swift, it will get slouchy and it will it will get softer and softer as time goes on. Tadlact is a very comparison to box leather. The difference between box and Tadlact is the fact that box is very shiny. Box leather is definitely an acquired taste because it is very prone to scratching because of how shiny it is. Like it is ridiculously shiny, okay? It's glossy and it is very I would say it's more of a refined leather for the refined palette. Very, very um, formal. It's a particular taste that one must acquire to want a leather like that. I'm not yet at that level. Because of the way that it ages and the fact that it is very smooth and it's very prone to scratches and all these things that would make someone like myself have a heart attack. It is not a bag that I would ever consider at this moment in time. However, it is definitely a piece I feel like a true collector would have. A true Hermes collector has to have one of these. And that's why I say maybe not now, as I get older and as I mature, my opinion will probably completely change because I do love the look of it. It's a bag that you shouldn't have that thing of I don't want it to age. If you are a person that enjoys the true beauty of a leather aging, then box leather is definitely a way to go. Tadlact, however, is very, very soft in comparison to box leather. Tadlact and box leather share a lot of the same qualities in terms of the shininess and has absolutely no visible grains, which is, it's appealing for some people because some people don't like the grained leather look and prefer the smooth, luxurious, look that is from a smooth leather. I feel like when it comes to smooth leathers it tends to give a bag a different vibe completely and looks more formal than when you start looking at grained leathers. So grain leathers can look more casual as opposed to a box leather or tadelect bag. Last but not least we are going to look at chevre which is made out of goat skin. It is goat skin leather and it is really resilient. Honestly right I love Epson but I think I love chevre more and the reason why I love chevre just a little bit more is because of the fact that you have the natural grain of the goat skin whereas the Epson is an embossed leather so you have that choice when considering your options for an everyday bag and if you want to use that bag every single day then this is a great option it is also very very lightweight so if you do get a bag in that leather you're not going to be complaining because it's ridiculously heavy. If you want to know what chevre looks like that is the leather that they actually use to line the inside of your bag. So if you just want a quick insight to what chevre is like then have a look if you have a Birkin. There you go, you know what chevre is like. So so durable, water same thing as Epson you just wipe it off, you're not wrecking your brain and worrying about every drop of rain that might secretly do the matrix onto your bag. It's a very very good leather to consider if you don't want a bag in an embossed leather. And that concludes today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was informative enough. <laughs> Have a beautiful beautiful weekend, thank you so so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you next week. Take care. Bye.